Hey guys, it's me Danielle if you're new here. I wanted to come out here and actually touch on um, Isaiah uh, 44, uh, 47, well 44 through 47, okay? And um, also where y'all led me to, which was Jeremiah 3, okay? And I also have a couple of different you know, things that I will be also adding into the message from just the dreams that y'all has given me. And so I wanted to go ahead and start off with scripture. And I'm using scripture because people need to hear the word and apply the word and get revelation from the word as well from by the Holy Spirit, okay? So Isaiah 43, 23 says, Sing, O heavens, for y'all shall do it. Shall, O depths of the earth, break forth into singing, O mountains, forest and every tree in it for Yah, Yah, it says yahweh in my in the scriptures bible i'm reading from the scriptures by the way shall redeem jacob and make himself clear in yisrael thus said Yah, i'm just going to say Yah for the sake of okay your redeemer he who formed you from the womb i am Yah, doing all stretching out the heavens all alone spreading out the earth with none beside me Frustrating the signs of the babblers and driving diviners mad, turning wise men backwards and making their knowledge foolish. Okay. Confirming the word of his servant and completing the counsel of his messengers, who says of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, be inhibited and of the cities of Judah, they shall be built in her ruins raised up by me. Who is saying to the deep, be dry and your rivers I dry up? Who is saying of Koresh, he is my shepherd and he completes all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, let her be built. And to Hakel, let her foundations be laid. Okay. Now I want to tell you guys that y'all told me a long time ago that he was about to use the foolish things of the world to confound those who believe that they are wise. And that also kind of confirms uh, Isaiah 44, 25, when he says, frustrating the signs of the babblers and driving diviners mad, turning wise men backwards and making their knowledge foolish. Okay. And he also tells us to become a fool so that we can become wise. And he's really been highlighting how many are perishing from the lack of knowledge. And when he says knowledge in the word, and I'm talking about y'all, okay, he's talking about the knowledge and wisdom from him. Okay. By the Holy Spirit, the true revelation of what real wisdom and knowledge is and where it comes from not from our own understanding so you have people that are puffed up from their own wisdom from all the research which i see people out here making videos and really trying to dissect everything to make it seem as so as though they are so wise but y'all has even been highlighting those with even mega platforms and the wisdom and stuff that they've researched and doing all this study to even say that they are teaching certain things as well but it's still not in truth and in righteousness even those who are professing elohim as their lord and savior okay are saying that they are uh, speaking for Yah, if you will, okay? So I wanted you guys to know that. Also, um, that's somewhere in 1 Corinthians um, about using the foolish things of the world to confound those who believe that they are wise and also stating as well that the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing. And he kept highlighting that scripture to me as well. 1 Corinthians um, 1 18 we're going to start there and it says for the word of the stake is indeed foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of Elohim so it is only by the Holy Spirit of Yah that we are being saved because he is imparting his wisdom into us and his knowledge into us by his spirit in order to save us and to help us to conform to which is his image to be more like him and to be obedient to his ways when he does give us the revelation by his holy spirit of what's acceptable to him in his sight and what's an abomination in his sight and to get rid of those things but when you are trying to come out here and explain this to those who are not spiritually discerned OK, meaning that he hasn't given them the wisdom and understanding and the same revelation as he's imparted into his true vessels. Then those people are perishing because it sounds foolish to them. OK, like you can go tell someone something that the Holy Spirit has revealed to them. And I've had people do it in my personal life to be like, well, I don't feel this way and I don't feel that way. And I don't think this way and I don't think that way. It doesn't really matter what you feel or think. Right. Because he already tells us that our ways and our thoughts are not his ways and his thoughts and how he does things. OK. So again, 1 Corinthians 1.18, 
For the word of the stake is indeed foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of Elohim. Verse 19, for it has been written, I shall destroy the wisdom of the wise and set aside the learning of the learned ones. Okay, I'm going to say it again. For it has been written, I shall destroy the wisdom of the wise. Okay, so he's going to destroy the wisdom of those who believe that they are wise. Okay, they're wise in their own sight. And this again is that self-righteousness of being wise. And I see even some channels right now that would be more of like the uh, Hebrew Israelites or that type of movement for some of them that they are wise. Some of them are wise in their own sight, but it's still an error. Okay. It may look like it's also by the Holy Spirit, but it's still some new form of gospel is what y'all has shown me. You have the Holy Spirit with you, helping you to have that spiritual discernment. Yeah, you're not going to be deceived. Some will already fall away from the faith and many are falling away from the faith and the true revelation and the real good news have already been led astray by false doctrine. So some people have already been deceived already, but they still don't understand that they are self-deceived at this point. First Corinthians 120 where is the wise where is the scholar where is the debater of this age has not elohim made foolish the wisdom of this world okay for since in the wisdom of elohim the world through wisdom did not know elohim again for since in the wisdom of elohim the world through wisdom did not know elohim it pleased elohim through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe he said again Verse 21, for since in the wisdom of Elohim, the world through wisdom did not know, okay, they did not know him, okay, they are not led by the Holy Spirit, they don't even know who Jesus is, they don't know who Yehoshua is, okay, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them, but they're self-righteous and puffed up in their own research and knowledge, okay, so it said, it pleased Elohim through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. People are out here you know, spreading the good news by the Holy Spirit, trying to help warn people to help show them the right way to uh, lead them down the narrow path that Jesus well, will be able to bring them salvation by hearing, by hearing of the word, okay? And by hearing people's testimonies, how we overcome, okay? And to help bring people onto the right path. We know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? So, when people hear the good news and then the seeds fall on good soil and fall on good ground, you know, and start to bear good fruit is by believing in what they heard. Okay. Of preaching of the gospel. That's the true gospel, the true good news, not this new, new gospel that are out here. Okay. So verse 22, it said, and since Yehudim asked a sign and Greeks seek wisdom, Yet we proclaim Messiah impaled to the Yehudim, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. So it's right here, these verses are saying, and what y'all is saying is that he's put a stumbling block before them, okay? And he's also done the same thing to the Greeks to make it, you know, foolishness, okay? he Y'all can spiritually blind people, okay? He can also close up their ears from being able to hear because that's one thing I've been asking more recently. And he's like, then y'all blinded these people, okay? I have shut up their ears. There's only some people that y'all is allowing to really hear the true good news and for that seed to be implanted in them. And if you read his words, you will understand that, okay? It says in verse 24, but to those who are called, both Yehudim and Greeks, Messiah, the power of Elohim, the wisdom of Elohim, for the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men, and the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men. For look at the ceiling, brothers, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. Verse 27, but Elohim has chosen the foolish matters, okay? of this world, of the world, excuse me, to put to shame the wise and Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put to shame the strong. I'm gonna read that again. Verse 27, but Elohim has chosen the foolish matters of the world to put to shame though the wise. Okay, so he's gonna put to shame those who believe that they are wise in their own sight and Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put to shame the strong. He's purposely chosen certain people that other would consider weak or unqualified to actually shame the strong. And another thing that y'all has been pointing out to me is how he has these false prophets out here prophesying how y'all will be raising up people who are not church, you know what I'm saying? That, that are not, you know, 
caught up in religion and they would be out here doing what y'all told them to do. And I'm like, they are actually speaking prophecy on themselves. Okay, is what y'all told me. He's allowed these false ones to even get a revelation that they will be confounded too by the ones that he's sending out. He will also judge them too the same way that he sent Samuel to judge Eli when he sends out his judgments and his word through his prophets, his true prophets and prophetess, okay? His sent ones, his messengers, and his sent ones are his messengers, okay? Who he has put his spirit into them and sent them out, okay? And it says in verse 28, and Elohim has chosen the low born of the world and the despised, thank you, Holy Spirit, and the ones that are not, that he might bring to not the ones that are. And didn't I just say that? Look at Jesus around here. And it said again in verse 28, and Elohim has chosen the low born of the world and the despised and the ones that are not, that he might bring to not the ones that are, so that no flesh should boast in his presence. Verse 30 now. And of him, you are in Messiah, Yehoshua, who became for us wisdom from Elohim, righteousness also and set apartness and redemption. Okay, I'm going to say it again. And of him, you are in Messiah. You are in the Messiah, Jesus. Okay, Yehoshua, who became for us wisdom from Elohim. So again, by the Holy Spirit, Yah has giving us his Holy Spirit, okay, to dwell within us and also has given us the impartation for those who are in Christ, in Jesus, in Yehoshua, his wisdom, his righteousness, and also his set apartness, and he has redeemed us, okay? It says in verse 31, that as it has been written, he who boasts, let him boast in Yah, in Yahweh, all right? And so in verse um, two, I wanted to read this because it also talks about those who are not spiritually discerned, okay? And it says in 2 Corinthians 2, 1, and when I came to you, brothers, I did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, proclaiming to you the witness of Elohim, because the ones who he is imparting his Holy Spirit in, they are his witnesses. They are like a living testimony, right? So they will go through certain things and trials and tribulations and sufferings and different things just to be a witness, to bear witness, because it's all for his glory. So everything that we go through and how he pulls us out of it, how he delivers us, how he redeems us from these situations that we have been uh, placed in, right, is to be a witness and a testimony of how um, the goodness of Yah, okay? And we are to witness, you know, for him, even by speaking the word and preaching the good news. It says in verse 2, 2, for I resolve not to know any matter among you except Jesus, Yehoshua, Messiah, and him impelled, okay, or impelled. And I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling, and my word and my preaching were not with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And this reminds me, too, of those who have a form of godliness, but they de deny the power thereof. The power that they're talking about in scripture is the power of the Holy Spirit, the power um, given through people, uh, through their vessels by the Holy Spirit, okay, of Yah, Yehoshua, Jesus, okay? They're denying his power. Like, so when you have people coming out here and they're preaching the good news, it sounds foolish to them, too. And it also, you know, is trying to make it seem like people cannot be transformed, right? So you might have a person that was over here in the world, but then Yah saved them, right? And he's cleaned them up and now they're coming out here to speak. But people are denying that person or saying that this can't be from Yah. And even the truth of his word, people are also denying the power of the words that he's sending forth through, the through his servants by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I wasn't even going to say that. And it says... Again, two, four, and my word and my preaching were not with persuasive words of men's wisdom, but of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power in order that your belief should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Elohim. I love it when he comes through because I'm up here speaking and then he's coming right through and confirming it as I read. Okay. And this is not a part of what I read today. I wasn't even going to read this, but I felt led. Verse two, six, yet we speak wisdom among those who are perfect and not the wisdom of the, of this age. Okay. Yet we speak wisdom among those who are perfect and not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age that are being brought to naught. So the wisdom that his people, his set apart servants, his messengers, his prophets and prophetess, his apostles, right? Those with the apostolic anointing. Okay. And the prophetic anointing. The wisdom that we have and the knowledge that we have, 
that the elect has, right, are not going to be like the ones that are of this world, the ones that are already out here speaking, okay, that were not sent. They are speaking from their own wisdom and carnal understanding. It's not the wisdom and the knowledge that is coming from the Holy Spirit, okay? And so this is why I keep trying to reiterate this, not to, you know, really try to put people to shame, even though they come on my, you know, come out here trying to deny the words that are sent by the Holy Spirit, even down to modesty or even down to your outer appearance or even down to jewelry or even about the lifestyles that people are in or about adultery, just all these different things, right? It's foolish to people who are perishing. Hear me and hear me well. It is foolish. The wisdom and the knowledge that I am sending forth by the Holy Spirit, these are his words that he has placed in my mouth. To come out here to set people free and to deliver them so that they can receive salvation and be redeemed from their backsliding, from them being, you know, a people that was supposed to be chosen to him. But he said they are stubborn and they're in their own crookedness and they have backslidden from him and they are committing adultery and they betray their husband. Like how a wife betrays her husband. So are his people unto him right now. We have betrayed him, okay? And he's trying to redeem us so that he can be glorified, number one, and so people can have salvation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the wisdom that his set-apart ones have and the knowledge that they have are not like the wisdom of these people of our time of modern day, okay? Their modern day understanding, okay? I'm break it down for you. Of their carnal understanding of all these people who are saying, well, to me, this is the revelation that I receive. And this is why I keep saying your revelation and my revelation are gonna be two different revelations. And you gotta know which one is coming from the Holy Spirit and which one is coming from another spirit, okay? Moving forward. Verse 2, 7, 1 Corinthians 2, 7. But we speak the wisdom of Elohim, which was hidden in a secret and which Elohim ordained before the ages for our esteem. Again, but we speak the wisdom of Elohim by the Holy Spirit, okay, which was hidden in a secret. So I keep trying to tell you guys, y'all has hidden his word. There are some things that, yes, the scribes and they wrote, right? Or they were given by the Holy Spirit. But there were some things that were specifically hidden that Yah has made hidden that only he can provide that wisdom, revelation, and understanding to. And he can open the ears and the eyes to be able to see spiritual things and matters, right? And he's purposefully hidden these things for his his chosen ones to come out here to deliver the word. And these are the ones who are truly seeking him, who he has given the impartation of his wisdom to. And that still goes back to Jeremiah um, 33, 3, would come to me, I would teach you the hidden things you know not. These are the hidden things that he's hidden in secret that only he will reveal to his people and to those who are truly seeking him. So again, reconfirming that not everyone is going to have the same spiritual understanding of wisdom. Then when you're coming out here giving this type of wisdom, and this is to help some of these people who are in the body of Christ right now, who are really getting that, thank you, Holy Spirit, I feel, feel you, this set apart message that has been imparted to them by the Holy Spirit and people are rejecting it. Just like they're rejecting my word, they're rejecting their words too. They don't have mega platforms. They might have under 100 subscribers, 200 subscribers, 400 subscribers, and different things like that. But y'all is still sending a word uh, forth through them. And I was asking, not because I want to have a platform where as many people, but I'm like, y'all, why are people being able to really hear the message? You know, there's some things that he'll make a message go and it'd be like 1.2 people heard that. Like when I had the message about people being sick and sealed, I knew that he wanted people to hear that. Right. But I'm like these other things. Right. Too. A lot of people are not hearing it. And it's not that I want to be seen. I want people to be able to hear the message so that they can be saved. And I was trying to ask the Holy Spirit, why aren't certain messages being heard? And I know another person um, that was a subscriber back a while back, I think, or they may have watched my channel. I'm not sure if they're a subscriber, subscriber or not. They were going through the same thing, feeling like they shouldn't even post messages because people are not hearing the word. And so I want to encourage people, like people are not listening. They're not supposed to be able to listen. And if people don't think that y'all will do that, he says it in his words. There are some people that are going to hear the word that are supposed to hear it. And it's going to, you know, help them to you know, be able to be saved because they're going to believe the word that they he have heard, okay, by the set apart spirit that is operating through his people. But not every person is supposed to hear. Not every person is supposed to see. 
Okay, there are some predestined to hear, there are some predestined not to hear. He also has said he's made some for honor and some for dishonor. Like every person has been created, okay, has been created on purpose. Just like when Judas, he was created to be a betrayer. You understand what I'm saying? So people may not understand that, but it's the truth in his word. Okay, so don't stop posting, okay, your messages that are led by the Holy Spirit that he tells you to come out here to give. Okay. I don't care if one person only hears it. That was the only person that was supposed to hear the message. Okay. Because that has been something that's tripped me up. Like I want people to hear, I want people to be delivered. I want people to be redeemed. I want people to be set free. And he had to remind me of what it says in scripture. He had to remind me that there are only a select few of people that are going to hear the good news. He had to remind me that there are only a select few that are going to find the path because the path is narrow. He's also been reminding me too of the scripture that when he comes back, it will be like a thief in the night, right? And that people will still be going on with their daily lives. Like some people will still be getting married. Some people will be drinking and being married, you know, having a good time when he's people up out of here. Okay. So, and he has said apart ones like saving those people because all these people are too caught up in the world. It's just like when he was, you know, the wedding feast, right? People were too busy, just like they're too busy now for him. They are, they were too busy then. They are too busy now. Okay. And so he's going out here for those who aren't too busy, those who do want to seek him, those who do want to know the truth, those who will believe, those who were predestined to be conformed to his image, those who have been set apart from birth. Okay. He is calling those right now and he's going to put them in the forefront and he's going to send his word through them. So whether you're listening to them or not, whether you feel like they're qualified or not, whether they look the part or not, you're missing a message. Okay. And that's a stumbling block put before you. And that's a part of judgment because you don't like the truth of whoever that is for, for those who is for it. Those people don't like the truth and the truth is not in them. A lot of these people that are speaking, the truth is not in them. I don't care if they have 625 and even claiming to be speaking for Elohim is such some of these people that are also in these movements of the name movements and different things. Y'all was showing me some people, even one that claims to be talking some of this truth makes good videos, by the way, but it's still an error. And they behind the scenes, they, they are connected to things that still are getting them money and promoting certain things. I haven't even called that ministry, their ministry out and how they have now been led astray with new gospel. Moving on. And I tell you guys, it can be truth with a lot of lies. I'm sorry, two, seven again. But we speak the wisdom of Elohim, which was hidden in a secret, which Elohim ordained, ordained before the ages of our esteem, which no one of the rulers of this age knew. If they had known, they would not have impaled the messenger of esteem. So if these people knew the truth, right, they also wouldn't have killed Jesus, Yehoshua, right, if they knew the truth. But the truth was not in them. The Holy Spirit was not in them. The Holy Spirit was not dwelling with them. OK, they were never given spiritual eyes and understanding to be able to see nor hear the truth as it was then. So it is now. OK, so even the Holy Spirit dwelling within his servants, the set apart ones, the ones who he has called to be a witness of him, they can't hear you either. They don't understand what you are saying. They don't understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, nor are they able to spiritually discern anything that you are saying because it is foolish to them who are perishing. It is foolish to them. Let me go back to it. For the first Corinthians for 118, for the word of the stake is indeed foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it is power, the power of Elohim. Hallelujah. So, Verse 28, 128, which no one of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not impelled, okay, or impelled the master of esteem. But as it has been written, eye has not seen and ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man what Elohim has prepared for those who love him. Okay. Again, it's reiterating people have not seen or heard any of these things for those. Okay who are not in Elohim and are Elohim. Okay. And verse 10, but Elohim has revealed them to us through his spirit 
For the spirit searches all matters, even the depths of Elohim. Verse 11, for who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the man that is in him? So also the thoughts of Elohim no one has known except the spirit of Elohim. Verse 12, and we have received not the spirit of the world. Again, these other people that are talking, the babblers and everybody else, they have the spirit of the world. So their spirit is of the world and who is operating right now and giving some leeway to, you know, deceive people in the world is Hasatan Satan. So they are following that spirit of the world of worldliness. So they can't hear you. Okay. Those that are walking in the ways of y'all that are sitting here trying to walk in the ways of righteousness and holiness. Okay. And let me throw a side note in here. Paul was persecuting the followers. Okay. Those who have been given the set apart Spirit by the Holy Spirit to follow in his ways and his footsteps with their wisdom and knowledge. And he didn't like it. So when you see people saying he was persecuted, persecuting the Christians, no, he was persecuting those who were followers of Yah on the ancient narrow path of Yah. That's those were the ones who he was persecuting. He was killing those because people don't like this message of the true gospel. And so they persecute those, judge those, condemn those, mock those, slander those, you know what I'm saying? Who are actually walking in the ways by the set apart spirit that has been placed into them to follow in the footsteps of Yehoshua Jesus behind Yah. All right. And it says again in 2.12 Corinthians, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from Elohim in order to know what Elohim has favorably given us. Y'all has given us this as a free gift. You know, salvation is a free gift whom he gives to who he chooses to. His set apart spirit is a gift. His spiritual discernment, his wisdom, his knowledge is a gift given to those. Okay, the gift, of, just like the gift of healing, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, the gift of tongues, gift of discerning the spirits. Okay, spiritual discernment is a gift. Not everybody has the gift. Verse 213, 213, 1 Corinthians 213, which we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the set apart spirit teaches comparing spiritual matters with spiritual matters. I'm going to say it again. 1 Corinthians 2, 13, which we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, which these people out here are teaching from their own wisdom, okay? But we are teaching those who are set apart with the Holy Spirit, but which the set apart spirit teaches comparing spiritual matters with spiritual matters. We're comparing, we're discerning things by the Holy Spirit. We take it back to the Holy Spirit, even spiritual matters and things that are being said out here that are claiming to be said by the Holy Spirit. We are running this by the Holy Spirit himself that is also the Holy Spirit dwelling within us within us to say, is this from you, from your spirit, or is this another spirit out here deceiving people? Okay, verse 214. But the natural man does not receive the matters of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him. But the natural man, natural man does not receive the matters of the spirit of Elohim for they are foolishness to him and he is unable to know them because they are spiritually discerned. I'm going to say it again. But the natural man does not receive the matters of the spirit of Elohim. What are the spirit? What is the spirit in the natural matters? The things that I'm coming out here and other people are coming out here to tell you, you will perish in that sin if you don't release these things. If you don't come out of the world and the worldliness and operating in worldliness through your behavior, your thoughts, your actions, the things that you are doing to your body, the things you are teaching to your children, the things that you think are nothing wrong with, the things that are a sin to Yah, you will perish. He says even that the thoughts of foolishness is a sin to him. So if you want to stay, you know, adorning yourself with the things of this world, okay, walking in worldliness and choosing worldliness over holiness choosing worldliness over righteousness, okay? You're choosing those things. You will not be redeemed, okay? You will not be saved. You will perish. But it says in verse 215, but he who is spiritual discerns indeed all matters, but he himself is discerned by no one, okay? But he who is spiritual discerns indeed all matters, but he himself is discerned by no one. For who has known the mind of Yah who instructs him, Yahweh, who shall instruct him? But we have the mind of Messiah. So when we're coming out here, 
the set ones with the set apart spirit, of course. He has given us his thoughts, his mind, his wisdom, his spiritual understanding, because not everything was written. Okay. And some things are written, but there's some things that will be given to people by the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Spirit alone. And he's giving them the mind of Christ, the mind of our Messiah, the Holy Spirit. Okay. To have his understanding, to see things from his heart posture and his eyes, not our own heart posture heart posture and our own wisdom. Okay, verse three. And I, brothers, was not able to speak to you as the spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to the babes and Messiah. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you still are not able. So again, it's confirming again, there are people that are never going to get this. Y'all was leading me to scripture too, and I have to find it. And I'm just going to probably link it below for the sake of time that there have been people that their ears have been shut from their youth all the way up into their old age. They will never be able to get it. Their ears have never been open and they will never be open. Okay. It also goes on to say in verse, uh, first Corinthians three, three, for you are still fleshly. For since there is envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not fleshly and walking according to man? Again, people are still in their worldliness according to their flesh, operating and doing things, seeing nothing wrong with the things that they're doing because they are walking according to their flesh, not according to the Holy Spirit. In verse four, for when one says, I am of Shaul, okay, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not fleshly? What then is Apollos and what is Shaul, but servants through whom you believed as the master assigned to each? I planted Apollos watered, but Elohim was giving growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is any at all, but Elohim who gives the increase. So it's like people are saying, I'm of this and I'm of that, but we should also still be in one spirit. Okay. So when you have people, those who have the set apart spirit, you should be able to spiritually discern who is also having that same set apart spirit because we should be on one accord, moving by the same spirit, operating and flowing through us. Now, the delivery may be different, but according to the knowledge and wisdom, what is being given by the set apart spirit, it should be in one accord because it's the Holy Spirit that is being given by Elohim, Yah, our Messiah through the Holy Spirit to be on one accord. And he's the one that gives the increase. He's the one who plants, verse eight, and he's the one who waters are one. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for confirming that. And each one shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are fellow workers of Elohim. You are the field of Elohim and the building of Elohim. And according to the favor of Elohim, because Yah has favored those who he has given his set apart spirit to his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. According to the favor of Elohim, which was given to me as a, as a wise master, excuse me, builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But each one should look how he builds on it. For no one is able to lay another foundation except that which is laid, which is Yehoshua Messiah. And if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work shall be revealed for the day shall shall show it up because it is revealed by the fire. So when you are put through the refiner's fire, okay, and put through the fire, you're going to know whose work and whose spirit is coming from who because y'all is putting people through the refiner's fire also pr to produce the good fruits that he started in them and to purify them and to trim and prune away everything that does not bear good fruit. So this is how you're going to be able to judge people righteously according to the fruits after he is burning people up in the fire to see what fruit and what things, which branch, okay, what vine, okay, is from him and what is not, okay? Verse 13, each one's work shall be revealed for the day shall show it up because it is revealed by the fire and the fire shall prove the work of each one, what sort it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If anyone's work remains, which he has built on, he shall re receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, but so as through fire. Do you not know that you are a dwelling place of Elohim, that the spirit of Elohim dwells in you? If anyone destroys the dwelling place of Elohim, Elohim shall destroy him. For the dwelling place of Elohim is a set apart which you are. Let no one deceive himself. Again, let no one deceive himself. Verse 18. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become foolish. That said that earlier in the message. He wants you to become foolish so that you can become wise. 
Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become foolish so that he might become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Elohim. For it has been written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, Yahweh knows the thoughts of the wise that they are worthless. Again, and Yahweh way knows the thoughts of the wise that they are worthless that's verse 20 verse 21 so then let no one boast in men for all that belongs to you whether shaul or apollos or kepha or the world of life or death or the present or the future all belongs to you and you belong to the messiah to messiah and messiah belongs to elohim so i want to stop right there because i want to go back to isaiah 45 now okay and it said thus said Yah to his anointed to Koresh whose right hand I have strengthened to subdue nations before him and ungird the loins of sovereigns to open before him double doors so that the gates are not shut I go before you and make the crooked places straight I shatter the gates of bronze and cut down the bars of iron and I shall give you the treasures of darkness and hoarded wealth of secret places so that you know that I Yah Yahweh, who are calling you by your name and the Elohim of Israel. So I want to stop here for a second. Yah has been really highlighting um, firstborns, the firstborn inheritance. He gave me a dream, excuse me, in three different dreams of hidden things, hidden treasures, right? Hidden provision. And even when I had to come out here and speak on even the master's voice in the spirit that, you know, what he showed me, you know, is unclean. OK, she was also giving me a revelation of the firstborn's inheritance. You're going to be receiving the firstborn's inheritance. And I think that is for some of these other individuals who are in Yehoshua, Jesus, who have been following after him, who have been obedient. I'm not talking about people receiving blessings that ain't did nothing, ain't sacrificed nothing, ain't suffered nothing, ain't went through a fire, ain't went through a trial, ain't went through a test, that it have not been through no persecution, no mocking, no slandering, no type of judgment that Yah has brought his people to him to judge them righteously, to prune things from them, to refine them, to purify them, to make them more like them. I'm not talking about those who ain't gone through nothing and ain't changed nothing. Who felt like they haven't had to change anything. Who did not endure anything. Who don't want to endure anything. Okay. I'm not speaking to those. Okay. I want to make that clear. You can go listen to the other false ones out here telling you're going to receive all these different things that you're not going to receive. And you're wondering why it hasn't came to pass. Because you haven't laid down none of your stuff and came out of sin either. Okay. Um, He's given me. Two more dreams and one more as of three days ago, okay? I had a dream that I was inside of a hotel room in Tennessee, and this is the second time I've had a dream with a hidden door, okay, or a hidden wall. inside. Of, one was inside of a closet in another dream where I pushed, and it was a hidden door for me to push through and go through that. It was hidden. It was like a secret door. And then in this dream, it was similar, okay? And that dream, the other one with the hidden door in the closet, that dream I had in, I want to say 2021, 2022, excuse me. And this dream is from a couple of days ago. We're in August, 2023. Okay. Um, so in this dream, I was in Tennessee and I was in a hotel room. And you remember how there was wallpaper back in the day, like even in your grandparents' house or even in hotel rooms, right? There was some wallpaper that was lifted up off the wall, but it had like a, um, an outline imprint of like almost a door, how a door would be, the same outline would be of your front door if you were to open it. It's a, a whole rectangle, but when you open the door, it's like a rectangle, but that last piece, you know, is connected to the wall when you open it. So this is how it was in a dream. So I'm sitting on the bed and then I noticed this wallpaper is kind of pulled back, but then I noticed the indention like it was a door and it wasn't a large door, like it's a small area, like you would have to crawl through the door. And that's the same way it was in um, a dream, another dream that I had that it was inside of a closet. I was inside of a closet with clothing and it was a small door for me to secretly be able to push through the wall to go through. And so right after that, it was like I was downstairs in the lobby and there was a lady, you know, the lobby area where you can go to a restaurant or check in and check out. She handed me a receipt with some money wrapped in. It was like a $5 bill. And I don't know if I accepted it or not because, you know, but I knew when I woke up, y'all was highlighting, you know, hidden provision, right? Or hidden provision money you know what i'm saying our treasures right our inheritance he's just been highlighting inheritance and so another dream that i had too in 2021 was like i was having um i was moving and i was getting rid of some furniture and i was going to sell it but i was giving away giving it away but you guys know how that offer up um 
or you know facebook you know you can marketplace but how it was in a dream was like offer up that little um app right where you can sell or buy goods right and so in my dream this large bookshelf i was selling it but the app was called payday okay and it was a large bookshelf that i was selling on payday this payday app okay and so when i woke up all i got from the dream was a large unexpected payday We'll say that even when he has stripped us down, the flip side is coming for those who have went through those type of real seasons of Job who are in Yehoshua. And, and I will say that with all being bearing witness of his goodness. OK, that's all I'm going to say on that. So he is and he's led me to scripture, too. Like I just for those of you who are new here, I tend to just open my scripture and ask the Holy Spirit to lead me. And I have kid you not for three days straight. I have started reading in different sections of scripture. And I'm as I'm reading inheritance, inheritance, the word inheritance, pretenses are due. He also highlighted to me, too, by the Holy Spirit that these false ones have been stealing the inheritances that were due for his children. These false ones out here, I don't care what profession, what leadership they are in, government, these false prophets, these apostles, the false prophetesses, the false preachers, teachers, leaders, the false ones in the pulpit, they have been stealing the inheritances that were out here for his people, okay? And so he is bringing all the destruction, the fire, the chaos, the destruction to the earth. People that are being taken up out of the earth quickly and swiftly. He is bringing it all to naught in order to give the rightful inheritances back to his children. That is what's happening right now. He is judging the earth, judging, you know, sending out his spirit, the judgment on the righteous and the unrighteous. Okay. And for those who are falling on the right hand side of y'all who have been doing what they've been asked to do, who have been obedient, no matter what has cost them, who have counted the cost and have bared the, uh, bared the cross, carried their cross, enduring it to the end, those are the ones that are going to be blessed because it is for his glory that he's going to give them these things. But he's only giving it to those who are really his servants to help people, okay? He knows that their heart is pure and they will do what he asks them to do. There's a difference do. between tithing, okay? And sowing and giving. Y'all has asked us to give. When he had these temples set up, the storehouse was to give. Not for people to sit here and create storehouses and temples and churches for selfish gain by using the word to manipulate people into giving everything they have in order for these people to be propped up, to be living lavish lives, to be using that money to adorn themselves with every luxury and lust of the flesh and all of it is vanity into themselves. In self-idolatry, making themselves idols and worshiping their own idols of the things that is in their heart. That is not why he told us to store up. It was for the widows, the homeless, the fatherless, okay? And those who are in, in need. And so for those of you stealing, you need to give it back. And if you don't, y'all's gonna make you give it back. He's going to bring you to your nakedness, expose you and bring you to not, to where you will own nothing and have nothing by the time he is done with you. Holy Spirit, help me. You will have nothing by the time he is done with you. If you thought it was a game and thought people did not know that you were out here operating in this manner, he's going to expose you first and then he's going to bring you to not. And he led me to scripture that if you were famous before, by the time he got done with you, if you were well known before, by the time he gets done with you, you will be infamous and you will own nothing and you will be mocked and laughed at. And that will be a part of your judgment to say who, what happened to this person? They must be cursed and you shall be cursed. All right. I'm not talking about the ones who are lost like Job. I'm talking about these are the ones that are going to lose due to judgment because they will not repent. They will not humble themselves. And they are they are stubborn. They are evil and wicked in their hearts. And y'all says they're evil and wicked. So when you're up here, you know, serving yourself through selfish deeds. OK, gaining off of the sheep, stealing, capitalizing off a of monetary gain off of the sheep. That is wicked to him. That's abomination in his sight. May he have mercy, but he won't. Going on 45, Isaiah 45, thus said Yah to his anointed to caress whose right hand I have strengthened to subdue nations before him and ungirded the loins of sovereigns to open before him the double door so that gates are not shut. 
All right, I go before you and make the crooked path straight. I shatter the gates of bronze and cut down the bars of iron. This is for those who have been in bondage, right? And feel like you can't move forward and you can't move ahead, right? Y'all has gone before his true vessels to make the crooked path straight. This is why I tell those who have the cash apps and all these ways to get paid. And y'all think that he's called you to full-time ministry so you can put cash apps to serve yourself, to be in pride, to provide for yourself. Y'all goes before those who he has has called and he will make the crooked path straight. He will provide the vision. He will see them through. He will provide rivers in the desert. He will give them the streams of river in the desert for those who are thirsty. He will command the ravens to feed his flock. Okay. Just like he did with Elijah, he will send an angel to give you some cake. Do you hear me? You don't have to do anything except be obedient and walk by faith, not by sight and do what he's asked you to do. And he will open up the heavens for you. Okay. Through your obedience, through your faith, just by believing and being obedient. That is a part of your works. He says, work out your salvation with trembling in fear. I just read to you what he said, even dealing with first Corinthians, right? He says, for we are fellow workers of Elohim. You are the field of Elohim, the building of Elohim. Okay. We are to be doing what Yah has asked him to do. We're not supposed to just sit back here and say he, he was in Paul so I can keep operating however I want to and do whatever I want to. And I don't have to do anything. No, you, your works is through obedience to what he tells you to do. Okay. Moving on. Verse three, and I shall give you treasures of darkness and hoarded wealth of secret places so that you know that I am Yahweh, Yah, who are calling you by name and, and the Elohim of Israel. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, and of Israel, my chosen, I also call you by your name. I give you a title, though you have not known me. So he's still going to, you know, call his people into him. Those who did not even know him, he's calling them to. He's going to give them a title, okay, which he has done for most of his people out here that are operating by the Holy Spirit and let them know what they were designed to do. I am, verse five, Yah, there is none else. There is no Elohim besides me. I gird you, though you have not known me, so that they know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none but me. I am Yah. There is none else. Forming light, creating darkness, making peace and creating evil. I, Yah, do all these things. This is why when people say, Yah wouldn't do that, he says it right here. He, uh, he, right here, he's forming light and creating darkness, making peace and creating evil. I, Yahweh, do all these. Rain down, O heavens, from above. Let the clouds pour down righteousness. Let the earth be open. Let them bring forth deliverance and let righteousness spring up together. I, Yah, have created it. Woe to him who strives with his maker. Woe to those who are striving with Yah. Okay, they want to do things their way, operating in their flesh. And he's calling people to operate by the spirit, by the Holy Spirit. He said, woe to him who strives with his maker, a pot, a pot shirt with pot shirts of the earth. Does clay say to him who forms it? What are you making or handy handiwork? Say he has no hands. Woe to him who says to his father, what are you bringing forth? Or to the woman, what, what are you laboring over? Thus said Yah, the set apart one of Yisrael, Israel. Do you ask me about my sons, what is to come? And about the work of my hands, do you command me? I have made the earth and created man on it. My hands have stretched out the heavens and, and all the their hosts I have commanded. I have stared him up in righteousness. So for those of you who don't understand it, Yah has done the staring of the hearts and people, his servants by his Holy Spirit to stir him up in righteousness in all his ways I make straight. So he's making even his servants, the chosen one, the set apart ones to, he's stirring them up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel you. He's stirring them up in righteousness in all of his ways. I make him straight. He's going to make your path straight. I make it straight. He builds my city and lets my exiles go, not for price nor reward, declares Yah of hosts. So he says his set apart ones. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this word. He builds my city. So his servants builds his city through the Holy Spirit and lets my exiles go. But he said, what? Not for a price and not for a reward. The ones who he has sent out here are not doing this for any gain or any profit. Verse 14, thus said Yah, the labor of Mitzurim, 
Okay, and merchandise of Cush and of the Seabites, men of seas come over to you and they are yours. They walk behind you, they come over in chains and they bow down to you. They make supplication to you saying, indeed, El is in you and there is none else, no mighty one. Truly you are El who hides yourself, O Elohim of Israel, Savior. They shall be, be put to shame and even be humiliated. All of them, the makers of idols, shall go away together in humiliation. Israel shall be saved by Yahweh with an everlasting deliverance. You are not to be ashamed nor hurt forever and ever. So you might have been hurt and put ashamed for a little while and been afflicted before a little while, but he's going to make sure that you are not put to shame forever. Okay. He's going to give you everlasting deliverance. And you will not be hurt. You will be saved. Verse 18. For thus said Yah, Way, creator of the heavens. He is Elohim, former of earth, its maker. He established it. He did not create it to be empty. He formed it to be inhibited. I am Yahweh. There is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I have not said to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I am Yahweh speaking righteousness, declaring matters that are straight. Gather yourselves and come drawn near together. You who have escaped from the nations, no knowledge have they who are lifting up the wood of their carved image and pray to a mighty one that does not save. Okay, declare and bring near. Let them even take counsel together. Who has announced this from old? Who has declared it from that time? It is not Yahweh Yahuwah. And there is no mighty one besides me, a righteous El and a savior. There is none beside me, besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am El and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, this is verse 25, a word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. So that me, every knee shall bow, every tongue swear. Verse 24, one shall say only in Yahweh, Yah, do I have righteousness and strength. He comes to him and all those displeased with him shall be put to shame. And in Yahweh, Yah, all the seed of Israel shall be declared right and boast. 4612, listen to me, you stubborn hearted who are far from righteousness. I shall bring my righteousness near. It is not far off. My deliverance, it is not delayed. I shall give deliverance and Tyson my esteem to Israel. Verse 47, okay? Come down and sit in the dust, O maiden daughter. This is for the ones that are stubborn, okay? Who don't want to turn from their transgressions, okay? Oh yeah, y'all wanted me to point out verse uh, 46.8. Remember this and show yourselves men, turn it back, you transgressors, okay? Remember the former events of the old, for I am El, and there is none, excuse me, there is no one else, Elohim, there is no one like me, declaring from the beginning and from the old that which has not yet been done, saying my counsel does stand and all my delight I do, Okay? Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a distant land. Indeed, I have spoken it. I also bring it to pass and I have planned it. I also do it. And then he went into verse 46, 12. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted who are far from righteousness. I shall bring my righteousness near. It is not far off in my deliverance. It is not delayed. And I shall give deliverance in Tyson, my esteem to Israel. Then he goes on to say what he's going to do. Verse 47, come down and sit in the dust, O maiden daughter of Babel. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of Kasdim. For no more do they call you tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind flour, remove your veil, lift up your skirt, uncover the leg, pass through the rivers. Let your nakedness be uncovered. Let your shame also be exposed. I take vengeance and meet no man. Our Redeemer, Yah of hosts, is his name, the set apart one of Israel. Sit silent and go into darkness, O daughter of Kasdim. For no more do they call you mistress of reigns. I was wroth with my people. I have profaned my inheritance and I have gave them into your hand. You showed them no compassion. You made your yoke very heavy on the elderly. Going on to Isaiah 47, 7. And you said, I am a mistress forever so that you did not take these matters to heart and did not remember the latter end of them. And he said, and this is where he started pointing out, you know, Isaiah 47, verse 8. And now hear this, you who are given to pleasures, who dwell complacently, 
who says in your heart, I am, and there is none but me. I do not sit as a widow, nor do I know the loss of children. So these are people that are mocking, say they have never been a widow and they haven't had anything that they really went through, right? He said in verse nine, 47, nine, both of these come to you suddenly. And one day, the loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon you in the completeness because of your many witchcrafts for your numerous great potent spells. And you have trusted in your evil and you have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have led you astray. And you have said in your heart, I am and there is none but me. But evil shall come upon you. You not knowing from where it arises and trouble fall upon you. You being unable to put it off and ruin come upon you suddenly, which you know not. Stand now with your potent spells and your many witchcrafts in which you have labored from your youth. It, if so be you are able to profit, if so be you will find strength. You are exhausted by your many counsels. Let the astrologers, the stargazers, and those who prognosticate, excuse me, by the new moon stand up and save you from what is coming upon you. So these are the ones in many witchcraft, potent spells, the astrologers, the stargazers. He's saying, go ahead that pro pronosticate by the new moons like you know watching the new moons he said let that save you from what's coming to you see they shall be a stubble fire shall burn them they do not deliver themselves from the power of the flame there is not a coil or a coal to be warmed by nor a fire to sit before it so they shall be to you with whom you have labored your merchants from your youth he said these people have been doing this since they were little Okay, from your youth, they shall wander each one his own way. There is none to save you. So he's going to let you wander. These people are going to wander and there's going to be nobody to save you from what he will bring to you. He said, suddenly it will happen in a day. All of these things will come to you in a day. You will be a widow in a day. You will lose your children in a day. Okay, because of the many witchcrafts and the potent spells which you have laid out. Okay, because people are falling after the lust of their flesh, their own evil. Isaiah 48, hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel and have come from the waters of Yehuda, Judah, who swear by the name of Yah Yahweh, Yah, profess and profess the Elohim of Israel. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. These are also the ones, hear me and hear me well. Hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel, who have come from the waters of Judah, who swear by the name of Yahweh, Yah, and profess the Elohim of Israel, though not in truth or in righteousness, though not in truth or in righteousness. You hear me? For they call themselves after the set apart city, for they call themselves after the set apart city. I'm using a word to slay people right now and lean on Elohim of Israel. Yahweh, Yah of hosts is his name. I declare the former events from the beginning and they went forth from my mouth and I made you hear them. Suddenly I acted and they came to be. See, people haven't been able to hear things for a while, but he's saying he's going to make these people hear what he's going to be bringing and what he is declaring. Okay. He said, um, I have declared the former events from the beginning and they, and they went forth from my mouth and I made you hear them. Suddenly I acted and they came to be because I knew that you were hard and your neck was iron sinew and your forehead was bronze. Therefore, I declared it to you long ago before it came. I made you hear. Least you should say my idol has done them and my carved image and my molded image commanded them. So he's saying, I'm going to make you hear all the things that are going to come. So you know it came from me, from y'all, from Yahweh. You're going to know it came from him by the time he makes you hear it. And then it's going to come to pass. So you can't even sit here and give what is his wrath and his judgment and attribute it to your idols. Okay. And to your carved image and saying your carved, carved image has commanded it. Verse, excuse me, 48, 6. You have heard, look at them all. And do you not declare it? From now on, I shall make you hear new ones even hidden ones, even hidden ones, which you have not known. Now they shall be created and not long ago. And before this day, you have not heard them. Least you should say, look, I knew them. Verse eight, 48, eight in Isaiah. Okay. No, you have not heard. No, you have not known. No, from old, your ear has not been opened because I knew that you are indeed treacherous and are called a transgressor from the womb. Remember how I told you that they were transgressors from the womb, y'all has said? 
and that they are wicked, come out the womb wicked, speaking evil. All right, verse 48, nine, for my name's sake, I postponed my displeasure. And for my praise, I held it back from you so as to not cut you off. See, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Verse 11, for my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how is it profaned? And my esteem, I do not give to another. Verse 48, 12. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first and I am the last. Also, my hand has laid foundation of the earth and my right hand has stretched out the heavens and I call to them, let them stand together. All of you gather yourselves in here. Who among them has declared these? He's asking a question here. Who has, who among them has declared these? Y'all, Yahuwah has let him do his pleasure on Babel and his arm be on the Kastim. I, I have spoken. I also called him. I brought him and he shall make his ways prosperous. Come near to me. Hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, I was there. And now the master Yah has sent me in his spirit. See? He said, and now the master has sent me in his spirit, just like he's sending his sent ones out now after he afflicted them too. even those who he has given and imputed his righteousness, who he has, you know, sent them through the fire, who has refined them. OK, not like silver, but refined him by the fire to prune all things. Now he's sending them out. Right. And he's sending them out with his set apart spirit in them. Thus said, y'all, your redeemer, the set apart one of Israel. I am Yah, your Elohim teaching you what is best. And leading you by the way you should go. So this is why when people try to come out here and dispute or come up against the things that the Holy Spirit, set apart spirit operating through me has taught me and has led me in the way to go. You can't argue with the Holy Spirit and say what the Holy Spirit is teaching his set apart ones is wrong. Okay, you guys who are operating out here by your own understanding are wrong. Because if you had the set apart spirit in you, this is what he says. Thus said, Yah, your redeemer, the set apart one of Israel. I am Yah, your Elohim, teaching you what is best, leading you by the way you should go. If only you had listened to my commands, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. And your seed would have been like the sand and the offspring of your inward parts, like the grains of the sand, excuse me, grains of sand. His name would not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Come out of Babel, flee, flee from the Kasdim, declare this with a voice singing and proclaiming it, send it out to the end of the earth. Say, Yah has redeemed his servant Jacob and they did not thirst when he led them through the deserts. Again, confirming what I said. If Yah is sending you out, you shall not thirst. Okay. He will provide provision. He goes on to say, he calls waters from a rock to flow for them. He split the rock and water gushes out. There is no peace for the wrong, said Yah. That's why I said, you don't have to do these things for yourself. Yah will make sure that he provides for you. Okay. Moving on, verse 49. Listen to me, O coastland, and hear you peoples from afar. Yah has called me from the womb. From my mother's belly, he has caused my name to be remembered. So he's causing people's name to be remembered at this time, his people. And he made my mouth like a sharp sword. See, this is why people may not like people's mouths like myself, or they'll say, oh, that person is boastful or they're arrogant. No, he is causing my mouth and my lips to be like a sword. Okay, he sharpens it. OK, to send this word out because his spirit is the sword. OK, and he said he made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand. He hid me and made me polish, made me a polished shaft in his quiver. He hid me and he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, in whom I am adorned. And I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my spirit. I have spent my strength for emptiness and in vain, but my right ruling is with Yahweh and my work with my Elohim. And now said Yah, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him. So he's sending his servants out to bring his people back to him so that they can be redeemed. And he has called these people from the womb. For before the foundations of the earth were laid, okay, he knew these ones. He calls them to have a certain foreknowledge of who he is. And he was reminding them of who they are and the knowledge that he's placed within them, okay? He said, 
Um, and now said Yah, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him. Though Israel is not gathered to him, yet I am esteemed in the eyes of Yah, and my Elohim has been my strength. He says in verse um, 49, 6, and he says, Shall it be a small matter for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved ones? To bring back who? The preserved ones. There is a certain group of people that are preserved, okay, of Israel. And not all of Israel is Israel, okay? Uh, not all of Israel who claim to be of Israel is Israel. That's where we go back to verse 48, one where he says here this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel and who have come from the waters of Judah, who swear by the name of Yahweh and profess the Elohim of Israel, though not in truth or in righteousness. For they call themselves after the set apart city and lean on the Elohim of Israel. Yah of hosts is his name. Okay. So they are calling themselves, you know, Israel, but they're not Israel. Okay. They calling themselves the set apart city and set apart. They set apart. They're the chosen one and they not it. They are not it. I'm telling you the ones who think they are set apart most of the time are not even set apart. They are self-deceived. He says, and he shall uh, make verse six, 48, nine, six, Isaiah 49, six. And he says, shall it be a small matter for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved ones of Israel. And I shall give you as a light to the nations to be my deliverance to the ends of the earth. He said, what I shall give you as a light because the Holy Spirit is a light. Okay. Within us. Okay. Operating through us to be my deliverance, to help bring people to him. Okay. To deliver people from themselves, from the self-deceived state that they are in, to help them to be saved, okay, to the ends of the earth. Verse 49, 7. Thus said Yah, the Redeemer of Israel, their set-apart one, their set-apart one, to the despised, to the loath one of the nation, to the servants of rulers, sovereigns shall see and arise. Rulers also shall bow themselves because of Yah, who is steadfast, the set apart one of Israel, and he has chosen you. Okay. So even rulers are going to bow down. They're going to bow themselves down because of Yah, the one who you serve. Okay. Who we are serving, who is steadfast, the set apart one of Israel, and he has chosen you. Thus said Yah, in a favorable time, I shall answer you. Okay. Not in our time, but in a favorable time, I shall answer you in the day of of deliverance, I shall help you and I guard you and give you for a covenant of the people to restore the earth, to cause them what? To inherit the ruined inheritances. So again, y'all is still talking about the inheritances that his people will receive. Okay. When he starts to slay by the sword, by his judgment, by his wrath, he's going to give the ones who are in covenant with him their inheritances. Okay. It says in 49.9 to say to the prisoners, go out to those who are in darkness, show yourselves, let them feed on the ways and let their pastures be on all bare hills. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither heat or sun strike them for he who has compassion on them shall lead them even by found fountains of water, guide them. Okay, he shall even lead them, even by fountains of water, guide them. And I shall make all of my mountains a way and my highways raised up. See, these come from far away and see those from the north and west and these from the land of Sinian. Okay, sing, O heavens, rejoice, earth, and break out in singing, O mountains, for y'all shall comfort his people and have compassion on his afflicted ones. I need y'all to get this because even though we see things happening in the world, y'all is going to lead his people, provide for his people, just like he did before when he was leading the Israelites out of Egypt, he shall do it again. And just as the days of Noah, so it shall be again, because y'all had even given my son a dream that um, he was trying to hurry up and get all his toys together to get inside of the um, Noah's ark. He said, mom, I had a dream the other day that I was trying to get my toys quickly to get inside of the ark and you were in there too. And I was trying to hurry up because it was a real flood, like a big flood. It was real. It was coming. And we had to hurry up and get into the ark because he was about to flood the earth. As in the day of Noah, remember y'all only saved a select few, those who are in covenant. Okay. Noah and his family, just like he saved Abraham and had Abraham leave from that land, okay, from Sodom and Gomorrah, only spared him, 
The same it shall be now. I don't know why people think that it's going to be everybody who is out here in everybody's churches and listening to everybody else and doing ways of the world, thinking that they're about to be saved when they're not. A select few, okay, who are the preserved ones of Israel, okay, back in 49.6, all right, and those whom he has mercy on, those are the select few who are going to be saved out of the earth, all right? Then we go back down to Isaiah 49, and he said, Again, single heavens rejoice, I'm excusing, 49, 13, single heavens rejoice, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains, for y'all shall comfort his people and have compassion on his afflicted ones. Verse 14, but Tyson says, y'all has forsaken me and y'all has forgotten me. Would a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Though they forget, I never forget you. I'm gonna say it again. Though they forget... We might have forgotten at a time, but he never forgets. And see, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are always before me. Say it again. See, I have inscribed you, okay, remembered you, known you, sealed you, okay, inscribed you on the palm of my hands, and your walls are always before me. Your sons shall hurry your destroyers, and those who laid you waste depart from you. Okay, so anybody that try to do certain things like he will lay, um, he will make sure that your enemies, you know, will depart from you. Lift up your eyes round about and see all of them gather together, come to you. As I live, declares y'all, you shall put on all of them as an ornament and bind them on you as a bride does for your waste in your deserted places in the land of your destruction shall soon be too narrow for the inhabitants while those who swallow you up are far away. The sons of your bereavement shall yet say in your ears, the place is too narrow for me. Make room for me to live. And you shall say in your heart, who has brought forth these for me since I am bereaved and barren and exile and wandering to and fro and who reared them? See, I was left alone. From where did these come? Thus said the master Yah. See, I lift my hand up to the nations and set up my banner for the peoples and they shall bring your son in their arms and your daughters carried on their shoulders and sovereigns shall be your foster fathers and their sovereignness your nursing mothers they bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet and you shall know that i am y'all those who wait for me shall not be ashamed okay it is prey taken from the mighty and the captives of the righteous delivered I'm going to say it again because he was asking a question. Is the prey taken from the mighty and is the captains of the righteous delivered? Yet thus saith Yah, even the captives of the mighty are taken away and the prey of the ruthless is delivered. And I strive with them who strives with you. I save your children. I shall feed those who oppress you with their own flesh and let them drink their own blood as sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I am. Y'all am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I felt that. First, uh, Isaiah 50, thus says y'all, where is the certificate of your mother's divorce whom I have put away or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Look, you were sold for your crookedness and your mother was put away for your transgressions. Hear me again. Your mother was put away for your transgressions. When I came, why was there no man? When I called, why was there no one to answer? Was my hand too short for ransom or have I no power to deliver? See, my, see, by my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness and their fish stink for there is not water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with darkness and I make sackcloth their covering the master y'all has given me the tongue of taught ones he gave he did what he has get the master y'all has given me okay his servants aka his servants the tongue of the taught ones like the taught ones were his apostles right that i should know to help the weary with a word he wakes me morning by morning he wakes my ear to hear as taught ones the master yahweh has opened my ears And I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. So he's opened the ears to some people who were not rebellious to receive the word. Okay. He said, I gave back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from humiliation and spitting. And the master y'all helps me. Therefore, I shall not be humiliated. So I have... So I have set my face like a flint and I know that I am not put to shame. Near is he who declares me right. Who would contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near. 
See, the master y'all helps me. Who would declare me wrong? See, all the men wear out like a garment. A moth eats them. Who among you is fearing y'all? Obeying the voice of his servant that has walked in darkness and has no light. Let him trust in the name of y'all and lean upon his Elohim. See, all you who light a fire, excuse me, girding on burning arrows, walk in the light of your fire and the burning arrows you have lit. From my hand, you shall have this. You shall lie down in grief. 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, seeking y'all. Look to the rock where you're hew, hewn from and to the hole of the pit you were dug from. Look to Abraham, your father. I'm getting tongue tied. I'm sorry, y'all. Look to Abraham, your father and to Sarah who bore you for he was alone when I called him. And this is why I say those who be trying to be out here saying I was anointed by this or have to do things outwardly. I told you guys, he anoints people in private. It says, look to Abraham, 51 two. look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was alone when I called him, and I blessed him and increased him. For Yah shall comfort Tyson, he shall comfort all her waste places. For he makes her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like a garden of Yah. Yahweh joy and gladness are found in it thanksgiving in the voice of song listen to me my people and give ear to me O my nation for the Torah goes forth from me and my right ruling I set as a light to the people my righteousness is near my deliverance shall go forth and my arms judge peoples coastlands wait upon me for my arm they wait expectantly lift up your eyes to the heavens and to the earth beneath for the heavens shall vanish like smoke and the earth wear out like a garment and those who dwell in it die as gnats but my deliverance is forever and my righteousness is not broken listen to me you who know righteousness a people whose heart is my torah what a people whose heart is my torah do not fear the, the reproach of men nor be afraid of their revilings for a moth eats them like a eats them like a garment and a worm eats them like wool but my righteousness is forever my deliverance to all generations awake awake put on strength o arm of yah awake as in days of old everlasting generations i cannot talk today was it not you who cut rahab apart and pierced the crocodile was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over and let the ransom of Yah return and they shall come to Tyson with singing with everlasting joy on their heads. Let them attain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I, I am he who comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid of man that dies and of the son of man who is made like grass? And you have forgotten Yah, your maker, who stretched out the heavens heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and you continually fear all the day because of the rage of the oppressor as he has prepared to destroy and where is the rage of the oppressor question mark bowed he hastens to be loose that he should not die in the pit and that his bread should not fail but i am yah your elohim staring up the sea and its waves roar Yah of the host is his name, and I have put my words in your mouth, and with the shadow of my hand I have covered you. the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth to say to Tyson, you are my people. Awake, awake yourself. Rise up, O Jerusalem, you who have drunk at the hand of Yah, the cup of his wrath. You have drunk the dreads of the cup of reeling and drained it out. Of all the sons she bore, she has none to guide her, and all of the sons she has brought up, none is strengthening her hand. Both these are coming upon you, okay? This is what he's saying. Both of these are coming upon you. Who is sorry for you? Ruin and destruction, scarcity of food and sword. How shall I comfort you? He said, both of these are coming to you. Who is sorry for you? Like who's gonna be sorry for you when the ruin and destruction and scarcity of food and the sword comes to your household, okay? How shall I comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the street like a gazelle in a net. They are filled with the wrath of Yah, the rebuke of your Elohim. Therefore, please hear this. You afflicted and drunk, but not with the wine. He's saying these people are going to be afflicted, but not with the drunk of the wine. It's going to be by his wrath, okay? Thus said your maker, excuse me, thus said your master, Yah, and your Elohim, who pleased the cause of his people. See, I shall take out your hand, the cup of reeling, and the dreads of the cup of my wrath. Never again shall you drink it, and I shall put it into the hand 
of those who afflict you. So the same thing that was happening to you that was given by the wrath of y'all through judgment, he's about to now serve up these people, okay? The oppressors, the evil ones, your enemies, I shall put it into the hand of those who afflict you and who have said to your being, bow down and we pass over you and made you and made your back like the ground as the street to walk over. That's all I'm going to um, read out of Isaiah. I want to touch on Jeremiah 3 for the sake of time. And I'm sorry, this is long. I've been trying to get this out and y'all should go back and watch my prophetic videos for the prophecy about this different animal attacks, shark attacks, you know, in the waters, um, pools, um, the zoo attacks um, with animals or, you know, I had a dream too where there was my child, I said a child that I had to help, but he had fell into the zoo habitat. And I saw a news article of someone um, that happened too. But if you see all this stuff, the fire and stuff, like y'all just had me put out that word with the burning forest. Look at Hawaii. I forgot to tell you guys, and I don't know if you guys remember all those Hawaii tags where y'all had me kept seeing Hawaii and the Hawaii license plates actually have a rainbow in it. And I didn't tell you guys recently, like everywhere I've been going, I've been seeing shirts that had Maui on it. And I never came out here and said anything about it. I think I posted pictures in my community board that I might have took them off. But how about Maui was the one hit with this burning fire, but I never came out here. So I want you guys to go back and watch some of those prophetic videos by the Holy Spirit and read in the comment section if it's open some of the other dreams I had to see how things are coming past and it's coming past swiftly. Okay. I wanted to read Jeremiah 3. This is where he led me to this morning, 314. And it says, Return, O backsliding children, declares Yah, for I shall rule over you and shall take you one from a city and two from a clan and shall bring you to Tyson. And I shall give you shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you, you with knowledge and understanding. So they're going to feed, we're feeding people, his sheep. He's sending out shepherds now. They're going to feed people, the sheep, with his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Okay. And it shall be when you have increased and shall be fruitful in the land in those days, declares Yah, that they no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of Yah, neither would it come to heart, nor would they remember it, nor would they visit it, nor would it be made again. At that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of Yah, and all the nations shall be gathered to the name of Yah and to Jerusalem, no longer walk after the stubbornness of their evil heart, okay? In those days, the house of Judah shall go to the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given as an inheritance, this is where I told you, you let me again, inheritance, to your father. But I said, how would I put you among the children and give you a pleasant land, a splendid inheritance of the host of nations. And I said, call me my father and do not turn away from me. But indeed, as a wife betrays her husband, so have you betrayed me, O house of Israel, declares Yah. A voice was heard on the on the bare heights, weeping supplications of the children of Israel because they have perverted their way. They have forgotten Yah, their Elohim. Return, O backsliding children, I shall make your backsliding cease. See, we have come to you, for you are Yah, our Elohim. Truly, delusion comes from the high hills, the noisy th throng on the mountains. Truly, in Yah, our Elohim is deliverance of Israel. Israel, For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. Their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters, we shall lie down in our shame while our reproach covers us. For we have sinned against Yah, our Elohim, fathers from our youth, even to this day, and have not obeyed the voice of Yah, our Elohim. So he's asking us to return back to him, okay? Because we have not been obeying him. I want you guys to go and read uh, Jeremiah 4 for the sake of time because I have to get ready to go. But it also talks about in uh, chapter 4, it says, if you do return to me, O Israel declares y'all return to me. And if you remove your abominations from my presence and see straying and it shall swear as y'all lives in truth and right ruling and in righteousness, the nation shall bless themselves in him and they shall boast in him. For this is what y'all said to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your tellable ground and do not sow among thorns. 
And it talks about, oh my gosh, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Um, verse 4, 4, circumcise yourselves unto y'all and take away your foreskins of your hearts, you men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Least my wrath come forth like fire and burn with none to quench it. We're well, seeing that, right? And I told you guys in the last uh, prophecy, a prophetic word using the word that none will be able to quench anything that y'all is doing. Okay. And it says none will quench it because of their, because of the evil of your deeds. Declare in Judah and let it be heard in Jerusalem and say, blow a shofar in the land, cry aloud and gather yourselves. Let us go into the walled city. Lift up the banner towards Tyson. Be strong. Do not stand still for I am bringing evil from the north and a great destruction. A lion has come up from his bush and the destroyer of nations is on his way. He set out from his place to make your land a ruin. Your cities are laid waste without inhibitants. Okay. And we see that happening all over the world. Like Hawaii's there's, he's bringing death, right? There are going to be no people lay, being able to stay there. He's bringing it down to waste, to nothing, to not. Okay. Verse uh, four, nine. And in that day, it shall be, declares Yah, that the heart of the sovereign shall perish in the hearts of the head and the priest shall be astonished and the prophets will wonder. Then I said, ah, Master Yah, truly you have greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, peace is for you, whereas this war reaches the heart. At that time, it shall be said to this people and to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, a scorching wind of bare heights blows in the wilderness towards the daughter of my people, not to fan or to cleanse. A wind too strong for this shall come for me. Now it is I who speak judgments against them. See, he comes up like clouds and his chariots like a whirlwind. His horses shall be swifter than eagles. Woe to us for we have been ravaged. O Jerusalem, wash your hands from evil and be saved till when would your wicked thoughts remain within you? For a voice is declaring from Dan, is proclaiming trouble from Mount Ephraim. Announce to the nations, look, proclaim against Jerusalem that besiegers are coming from a distant land and raise their voice against the cities of Yehuda, Judah. Like keepers of a field, they are against her all around because she has rebelled against me, declares Yah. Your ways and your deeds have brought this upon you. This is your evil because it is bitter, because it has reached into your hearts. Oh, my inward parts, my inward parts, I am in pain. Oh, the walls of my heart, my heart pounds in me. I am not silent for you have heard. Oh, my being a voice of a chauffeur, a shout of battle. Destruction upon destruction cried for all the land is ravaged. Suddenly my tents are ravaged, my curtains in a moment. So he's saying he's going to bring all this destruction. Okay. In a moment, everything will be done in a moment, quickly. How long shall I see a banner and hear a voice of a chauffeur? Verse 22, for my people are foolish. This is what y'all was highlighting to me today. For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are stupid children and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. So he said, y'all, people are, are quick to do evil, but they don't, they're not quick to do good and do what's good according to him. All right. So he says, and I'm almost done. I look at the earth and I saw it was formless and empty and the heavens, they had no light. I looked at the mountains and saw they shook and all the hills were swaying. I looked and saw there was no man and all the birds of the heavens had fled. I looked and saw the garden land was a wilderness and all its cities were broken down at the presence of Yah by his burning displeasure. And we see that his burning displeasure for thus said Yah, all the earth shall be a ruin, but I shall not make a complete end of it. Not yet. So even though we see this, it's not yet the end, okay? It's not yet the end. He said, I sh he said, for thus said Yah, all the earth shall be a ruin, but I shall not make it a complete end. On account of this, let the earth mourn and the heavens above be dark because I have spoken, because I have purpose and shall not relent, nor do I turn back from it. All the city is fleeing from the noise of the horsemen and the blowmen. They shall go and to the bushes and climb upon the rocks and all the city is forsaken and no one is dwelling in it. And when you are ravaged, what would you do? Though you put on chrism, though you adorn yourselves with ornaments. Now hear me and hear me well with this part because he's talking about vanity, the lust of the flesh, right? And what he said, and when you are ravaged, what will you do? Though you put on chrism, Though you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, though you enlarge your eyes with paint, we're talking about makeup, all right? 
and you beautify yourself in vain, vanity. Okay. This is why we shouldn't be adorning ourselves, wearing, making and putting on jewels and all this kind of stuff because it's vanity to him. He says, so what, what, what are you going to be able to do when he takes it all away from us? Right. When you, when he strips you from everything, what are you going to do? And it goes on to say, though you enlarge your eyes with paint, you beautify yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in labor, the distress as of her who brings forth her first child, the voice of the daughter, okay, of Tyson, she bewails herself. She spreads out her hand saying, woe to me for my faint because of the killers, okay? So I want you to know that y'all is going to be coming through here, all right? And he's going to be dealing with these people. You can go on to read all of this yourself, all right? And, you know, he's going to go on to talk about, you know, how people swear falsely, you know, and all the, all of that good jazz. But I want you guys to know that everything that you're seeing, people going without power, the rivers are drying up around the world. OK, the river, um, the waters are being scorching hot. You know, the temperatures are scorching hot. We got burning fires. We got um, the, the water like the, the fish and stuff will be dead in the sea. You know what I'm saying? This is all a part of his judgments. People being stripped, you know, pastors preachers, teachers, priests being brought down, you know, dying. Um, all of this stuff is by his hand alone. I hope you guys stay to the end of this message. I know it's long, but I've been trying to get this all out in one word. Okay. And I want you guys to pay attention to the things that are happening around the wor world too, with all this, uh, scan and QR codes. You know what I'm saying? Like they're even putting QR codes for you to be able to print out and send the people to Zill. Okay. So I'm telling you right now, y'all is not up into no cryptocurrency. That's a part of the B system. He wouldn't tell you to, you know, try to save yourself and then also help with the B system that's ushering in. Shalom to you guys and take care.